Well, hey everybody, I'm under the bridge. I don't think the wind can bother me too bad under here. But, uh, man, it's, <laughs> it feels a little cool out here. Yeah, some of us that was born in Mississippi got thin blood. <laughs> hey, all joking aside, when I had to work in the construction surveying, uh, worked a little short time for uh, it required, let's just put it this way, it required that we work at night in rain, but it wasn't cold. I mean, it was, you know, in the summertime. But you're, you adapt. I noticed that about it. Every time I, I got put under the pressure of adapting, I got better at it. I tell you what you don't want to do is you don't want to go to a job site that you're going to have to drive way off into the woods and then hike in another two or three miles to get to where you're surveying and you ain't got the right jackets or the right clothes on. It's miserable. I did it twice. I learned my lesson. I should have learned it the first time, but I learned it. And uh, I always brought everything I needed. Uh, I kept an extra pair of boots in the truck and I kept extra socks and I changed, the, you know, I changed clothes out where I had uh, dry stuff. Yeah, in cold weather, they would actually make us go through water. Yeah, you had to do it. I mean, it was just what it was. I had babies at home. I had to, I had to work. And I remember being so cold. When I first started out, I was flagging traffic. You know, standing by a cone with a flag, telling the people, come and go, come and go, stop. Boy, some of them wouldn't stop. I had to just about get in front of the car to make them stop. <laughs> but I learned, I learned everything I needed to know about how to, to literally be, be in almost zero degree weather like it is now, wind chill 22. So I actually worked in weather colder than this. But uh, I guess even way back then, I was able to get my mind in a place where I could endure it and not take my mind into another place. I guess now we call it meditating. But... Uh, yeah, I'd be stuck out on the survey point 30 minutes waiting for a shot. Had to stay right there with the plumb bob so I could drop it right over the point so the guy that's a quarter of a mile away could literally see my string, my target, or the range rod. And I, I thought I was going to freeze until I learned how to do this modality of putting my mind in another place. And boy, I'm, I can do it right now. <laughs> I'm thinking about Jamaica. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting this body in shape over the next few weeks. Kiteboard shape. So I can be able to kiteboard and, and show people that if I can do it, they can do it. If I can do it and you've pondered about doing it, just contact me. If you want to come to Jamaica, I'll hook you up with an instructor and a and a place to stay uh, can't guarantee anything but i i can help there's bookings for kimberly and her phone number will be in the description in this and this video right here because i am inviting people that can't kite uh, we need kiters uh, people want to have fun come and kite with us and if you've got a dream to be a kite boarder well it we can hook you up with that too but it ain't cheap it costs money and then when you actually fall in love with the sport and you buy the gear the equipment the kites it that that runs you some money <laughs> and you can tear a kite up in a minute but my uh friend brian big brian little brian and the guys that trained me are really good and but i've learned a lot of tips and tricks so i can I can, give, I can give you some examples that really allowed me to get up quicker and easier once I understood about the technique used called body dragging. Yeah, it's amazing. But I got to get on the road. I'm, I'm stopped too long, I can tell. I'm getting cold on my core. All right, 
I'll holler at y'all later.